good. So we are all in the good. Um, so everyone, hi, sorry for that delayed. Oh, hello, Uma. Hello. Hi, Kat. Um, hi, Crystal. So we, I'm here with Will of Willpower Harris. And the other day, Will called me and he said, Benita, talk to me about reptilians. What's the deal with them? What's going on? Which is like, I love it when I say hello. And the other voice says, Benita, talk with me about, <laughs> and it's something like this. The interesting thing is um, uh, recently the Akashic Librarians channeled through me, um, actually it was on the 21st, uh, June 21st. They channeled through me some messages about the origin of the Akashic, of the reptilians. And they, by the way, do not like that term, reptilians, um, because they feel that's like calling someone any kind of slang, you know, word. So, but I don't know yet. Are you saying the reptilian is the N-word of New Age? Got it. Okay. Well, of this particular group. Got it. Um, and I have actually been working with the, um, uh, oh, hi, hi, Joanne and Debbie and Mariam. So glad you all could join us. Um, I have been working with the, uh, the Galactic Collective, which is, imagine like the United Nations, but representatives from every race and collective and being type in every dimension and every reality has representatives there, including those we call the reptilians. So I have been working on this issue, both in this dimension with like shamans and indigenous healers and in other dimensions um, for a few years now. So I was thrilled when Will called and um, for those of you who want to learn more about Will, Will, what's your website again? Willpowerharris.com. Uh, and Will goes around the world when he's allowed to travel, empowering young people to be actively healing for themselves, their community, and the world. He's like an amazing, motivating, empowering person who gets people really active and raising the vibration on every level with the communities they live in and caring about taking action on how they can impact global, global affairs. So. Thank you. But don't call me a motivational speaker because I, I feel the same way the reptilians do when you call them reptilians. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> what, what are we supposed to call them uh, if, well, if they're not well, the librarians call them the original guardians. Um, okay, that name does sound cooler. <laughs> yeah. And actually, um, I put the link to the video. It's an edited moment from a longer video where I channeled them. They were talking about the origin of the how they went from the original guardians to what they are now. And I gotta say that is actually the first time I've ever seen or experienced that much emotion from the Akashic librarians. Like they were in such agony talking about the corruption of this very pure group mm -hmm. that it was painful for me. And I was like stream, even though I was not in my body, my body was just like streaming tears it's like they were sobbing over this. So um, I put the video link here in the comments. I recommend everyone when you get a chance to watch it. It's just 10 minutes long, but hardcore. Wow, so they were crying. That must have a pretty strong backstory. Yeah, yeah. So um, why don't we start, Will, with what your question was, why you called, and then we'll jump to, that's a little teaser. We'll jump to the backstory in a bit. Okay. So I'm just curious to know, what are they? I never heard of them before. So what is a original guardian? <laughs> but they've also started invading your life. They've been coming in and confronting you or appearing in your general ambiance. 
right? So I've heard, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, so what the librarian said about the original guardians is, you know, we humans were never supposed to be the predominant species of the planet. We are like the last fallback plan. You know, there was like those we called the Atlanteans and there was like, you know, and the, all that stuff. And then there was the dinosaurs and the dinosaurs ruled the planet. And the thing is the age of the dinosaurs was one where they were, while they had their own uh, life plans and everything, you had the T-Rexes were predators and others were prey and this and that. They were evolving as a cohesive global uh, species. They, so the, eventually they were going to become the equivalent of what we are, but they would have remained always within their, uh, honoring their, their global soul contracts to each other. So everyone would have evolved in tandem. So while we have guardian angels, they had their guardians who were there helping them, watching over them, mentoring them, encouraging the growth so that when they became an enlightened species, their guardians were the ones who were holding their hand all the way through. But then came a meteor that wiped out 99% of life on our planet. Okay. And pretty much the ones that remained alive were small mammals that were burrowed deep underground and able to hibernate for long periods of time. And those evolved eventually into, you know, most of the life we have on our planet. There were some from the dinosaur era that are still here, like sharks and uh, alligators, crocodiles, like there were, there were some species that did not die and remained. And there are some, you know, like birds have evolved, you know, there are some species alive now that are mammalian-ish that evolved from, or aviary that evolved from beings that were alive then. So it was not a total wipeout, but the predominant species shifted from dinosaur to human in this process. Okay. The guardians that were watching over them were benevolent beings of light. For any of you who do like interdimensional travel, if you go to the Galactic Collective, um, and I know most people call it the much longer way, the, the Galactic Collective of Waysayers, like, like, you know, I, I always forget what it is because it blows my head. Um, but if you go to the Galactic Collective and ask to meet with the white reptilian queen or any of her emissaries, they are there trying very desperately to heal the reptilians that separate or, you know, guardians that separated from them. So there was a lot of these original guardians when the KT mass extinction occurred, agreed to go off and go elsewhere to do other work because their species had died. There was no work for them. There was a group that said, no, we're gonna stay and see if we can salvage this. They just could not bear to completely abandon those that they had promised to watch over for eternity mm -hmm. uh, or for a long time. Right. <laughs> So they stayed, but they were cut off from their collective. Like when the collective left, the ones that remained, basically because our atmosphere is so dense and they were on such a different frequency and everything, they basically, it was not a mean way of cutting them off. It was just inevitable. If they chose to do this, they would have to do it alone. There was no other way. Because the and planet being, was different. Exactly. And being trapped here in our very dense, dark energy, it affected them. It, it was difficult for them. And, you know, it's like being trapped in hell. It's going to affect you. Mm -hmm. and, um, and without any support from the infusion of love of their collective. And then when they saw humans evolving, they had a lot of anger towards us. They still, you know, a lot of them are like, really like, 
like who the heck are these beings who think they get to be like we're nowhere near the grandeur that they were guiding their dino civilization to become and we're really not like when i look at the future that would have happened if they had evolved it would have been like much more uh spiritually mm. loving like I, it would have been so much cooler so much more energetic volume to what we're doing so um hey, there's a the well there's a few things one right now the planet's raising its frequency i mean mm. this is happening the schumann resonance is going up things are happening everyone's senses are shifting new mandalas are appearing appearing on our planet like we're going through a metamorphosis but when our frequency is pure enough and humanity finally gets our act together all of the light beings will be able to connect with us again and these you know that we call the reptilians that are stuck here will have to like deal with their issues and reconnect or like so they don't want that to happen because they're they're stuck in their ways they're like they're here and they're filled with anger and like you know all kinds of wrath and stuff so they're stuck here and they don't want the evolution to happen you know like when someone's like really really depressed and they've just gone down a really bad spiral they're like no 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 come on let's like clean you up and get you in shape get you a job and they're like no just leave me alone they're a little bit like that so when the librarians look at them, they see the agony and the pain that brought them to this situation. They look upon them with great compassion and sorrow. Okay. They would like us to help the reptilians to return to their light, to reclaim what is beautiful within them and release their pain. But when we look at the reptilians, we see beings that are trying to harm our planet, harm us, you know, just doing a lot of like mechanisms and like, you know, um, putting toxic energy into mandalas and, you know, they're, they're just doing a lot of Weisenheimer stuff, uh, corrupting humans and then finding people in power and taking over their bodies and stuff like that. They're just doing all kinds of hijinks that we consider very threatening. And when we're threatened, we want to lash out, you know, self-protectively. But really, the only way to heal them is through compassion and love. You mentioned that there were new uh, mandalas. Mandalas. Mandalas, yeah. thank you. New mandalas that were appearing. What do you mean by that? Um... Well, again, like for anyone who is interested, look up the Schumann resonance. This is not a woo thing. This is real. The U.S. Geological Survey is measuring the Earth's atmosphere and the Earth's atmosphere is getting a higher frequency, higher resonance of, of energy. Um, for us who are very spiritual, we're under like less pressure in a way. And the more the resonance is like lightening up, the more lighter beings are able to connect with us and the more ease we have with connecting out there to other dimensions. So a mandala is an energy grid. It's a network. It's, it can be anything from, you know, a physical grid mm -hmm. um, to an energetic grid to an energetic grid. You know, it can be, um, like I was explaining today to someone, if you look at any city plan, you have a grid of the water lines, of the power lines, of the, you know, telephone lines, of the street traffic. These are all grids in a way they're mandalas and they create a certain level of energetic activity and connection within said city. Well, it is the same when we connect energetically, we're able to tap into energetic networks, some of which go to other dimensions, some of which go into earth, some of which connect you with animal spirit guides or crystals or your soul or, 
you know, your guardian angel or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it's just the way things can be connected and the, you know, um, boy, I could teach a whole class on that. <laughs> so as our planet's frequency is evolving and becoming lighter, higher frequency, things mm -hmm. that could not connect with our dense energy before are able to connect now. Okay, so is that why more people are experiencing and seeing um, guardians? Uh, seeing all as, kinds um, of okay. stuff. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Like people are calling me all the time, Benita, I've always been a visual person. Suddenly I'm auditory as well. Or I've always been an evidential medium, but suddenly I'm seeing spirits and angels. Or when I meditate, I can get so high before I space out, but now suddenly I'm able to go higher. You know, it's... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Things are shifting for a lot of us. So these reptilians, they're like, no! Bring the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that significant other that you really got to break up with if you ever want to smile again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Any of us. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, your significant other is awesome. <laughs> but in general, whenever we're with, have a friend or a loved one or a partner that's just like, anytime you're happy, they got to deflate you because it's easier to do that than to, for them to be happy. Okay. That's the way the reptilians are now. But they've got a lot of power because they've spent millions of years accruing their power. Are they like immortal? Do they not die? Um, they're they like any, like spirits. They're like the equivalent of angels. So, okay. yeah. So they're not physical. So they're not going to live or die. They just they just are. Uh, yeah, uh, they can evolve, but these have chosen to devolve. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because they were beings of light, and now they're beings of mm -hmm. anger. Okay. Uh, so is the anger just that Earth is different, or are they angry for something else? I think now they're just so used to being angry. They don't know <laughs> any better. The habit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the angry habit. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now there are some people who talk about like the hollow earth and how the reptilians are, have an entire civilization physically inside our planet. Yeah. Um, I heard they have something to do with like Lemurians being on hollow earth too. So clear it up. Yeah. How does yeah. Lemurians, reptilians, how do the ends work? <laughs> like journey to the center of the earth, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our planet is not actually hollow you mm. know geologically that's not possible but yeah. we're existing in one frequency of our planet there's a lot of frequencies it is very easy to exist in a different frequency in the same space I'm with you. I saw okay. this movie called Midnight Special that was like that. They had this whole entire world that was on top of like ours, but only if your thoughts were high, your frequency was high, you were able mm -hmm. to see it. So exactly. Like, like they're here, but they're not paying half the mortgage. <laughs> exactly. And when you think about it, like if people say, I don't understand how can two things be there at the same time? Like imagine you have a glass of water and it's also filled with sand. So you're looking at it and you're like, well, it's a glass filled with water. I'm existing in water. No, mm -hmm. it's a glass filled with sand. I'm existing in sand. If you were to go inside the molecule of mm -hmm. either one, while the outside of the sand is wet, the inside of the sand is dry because it's like, you know, ground up stone and shell, yeah. you know, it, it's not porous. 
So you can be inside a grain of sand and be completely dry. Or you can be exist where the sand and the water meet, mm -hmm. or you can be just in the water. So I don't know. If, I got it. I understood. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to you Rogelio, the shaman Rogelio, who's mm -hmm. in, um, uh, I think, Arizona. Um, he has this great video. Um, I'll, after we talk, I'll find it and put it in the comments where he's being interviewed. And he said one day he's walking through these uh, Buttes mountainous area where he lives and he knows this land like the back of his hand. And um, this woman walks up to him and she's like tall and beautiful and emanating light. You can tell immediately she's like a space alien. And um, so they talk and she said, would you like to go on my spaceship and come visit my planet? And he's like, yeah, I would, of course. So they walk up to this cliff face um, and he knows this mountain. He knows what the mountain, he knows the geology and the geomorphology of this area. So he knows what is inside this mountain as what, and what it's made of. It's definitely a very solid mountain. They go to this cliff face and the sides of the face slide open. There's a spaceship in there. They walk into the spaceship and the doors close. They are inside an alien spaceship filled with people or beings like her. In a very short period of time, the doors open and they are on this other planet. Uh, and then later they bring him home. And when they're done, the doors open. He walks out the doors. They say, bye, the doors close. He's looking at a solid mountain. So it's not that the mountain is hollow. It's that the ship and the mountain are in different frequencies in the same space. That actually makes and, sense. I mean, you think about someone trying to explain what happened to someone else who wasn't there, then they would think that, oh, the mountain's hollow or earth is hollow and that's where they come from. Okay. Uh, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I just love the fact, like after I heard that story, I'm talking with the librarians. Okay. How are we traveling through time and space like that? Like, that's what got me. Like they're here and then they're on this other home planet elsewhere in the universe. Like, how do you do that? And so the it was actually the Lemurians who taught me how to do that, but I don't so think I can do, explain it right now. <laughs> how do the Lemurians relate to the old school guardians? Okay, tell the me Lem the name again. I know it's like the Lemurians. Lemurians. What do you, what do we call the people? We don't want to say the R word. So <laughs> yeah, no, they call them the original guardians. Original. The Lemurians. Um, were guardians for what we call the Atlanteans. Like, okay. yeah. Now, just to be clear, the word Atlantis was made up in modern times by a science fiction or a fantasy author. So the, the Atlantis that went under the sea, mm -hmm. that actually is the island of Santorini which was an island off the coast of Greece that had a very advanced civilization. Not advanced like aliens, just advanced like uh, they had more wealth and more artists and intellectuals. And so they would often raid ships and bring the, you know, bring the plunder, take the plunder for their own, take the ships for their own, enslave everyone. And they really had an attitude. They really thought they were better than everyone else. Um, and then the island of Santorini blew up with such a volcanic blast that geologists can, there's an ash line all around the world that is the Santorini blast. It darkened the sky possibly for months with free floating ash in the air all around the world. Mm -hmm. So geologists, when they do core samples in the planet, they look for at this as one of the lines of demarcation for a timeline. Yeah. So some of the Santorini, Santorinians, and they didn't call it Santorini then, it's called Santorini now, uh, managed to escape and were then like enslaved by those they considered their inferiors. And then they're like, oh, look, we got a new slave, get to work. And they're like, ah, 
I can't believe I'm enslaved by you losers. You know, I'm like, here I was so much better than all of you till our fabulous place went mm-hmm. underwater and I'm stuck here with you guys. This is so primitive. Snobby and, slaves. Okay. Snobby yes. slaves. Got it. Yes. Bougie. Bougie so, slaves. When we talk about the Atlanteans, there are two things to talk about. One is the true story of Santorini that then became a mythology uh, written okay. in Greek lore. You know, the- Plato, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's like history. And then later you had some guy, I think it was the late 1800s, who coined the term Atlantis and put it upon the myth of this island. So, and then later, like our peers are like, oh, Atlantis was a global thing. There was a race of humanoids that were born with full memory of self, you know, like the way I was and full connection with self. And they were like bigger, like we referred them as the giant ones in Native American folklore you hear. They were like bigger, better, more awesome than we were. And they didn't have to work through karma. They were just always amazing. And because of this, they became very arrogant and they declared war on their equivalent of guardian angels, which were Lemurians. Okay, so to make sure, because everyone isn't going to be enlightened enough to know what you mean by full remembrance, but you remember past lives, so. I have full recollection of my existence from the time I was a spark in the cone of inception when Mm -hmm. I first left source to now. I've always had that, and I was, I chose in this life for the work I'm doing to be born with this Cool. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Like you wish, I wish I didn't remember or yay, I I remember. It's just a thing, but for the work I'm doing now, you know, and for the the experiences I had to have in life, it was necessary, but you know, now I teach anyone who wants, you know, it's not like I'm the only one who gets out. There are others like me. Sometimes I meet, I, I have a few acquaintances and um, more and more of our future youth, our current and future youth are, you know, like, consider me a pioneer paving the way. There's more and more being born this way. And if, if any of you watching this are like, I want to remember all my past lives. Um, I can tell you this Saturday, August 1st, I'm starting a five week, uh, class series, which is focused on that. So I'll put the link here if you're interested. Um, but I'm, you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Okay. So the Lemurians were kind of like guardians for the Atlanteans. Yes. Or the, as we call the giant ones, the great the giant, giant ones. Okay. The yeah. Giant ones. And the OGs, right? The original guardians, they were uh, protectors over like the dinosaur age, I guess. Mm-hmm. So they were expecting the dinosaurs to evolve? First the dinosaurs, that didn't work. And then those we call Atlanteans, that didn't work. And then we rose up and and they gave us karma. So we did not fall into the pitfall of the Atlanteans. But we found arrogance anyway. (laughs) So the Atlanteans didn't have karma, no cause and effect to deal with. Oh, they had free reign just to get buck wild. Oh, okay. That explains a lot. <laughs> it was it was thought if you give everything good to a race, then they will become even better. But instead they became uh, kind of tools, arrogant Absolute tools. Absolute power. Yeah, and they rebelled against their guardians. Now the Lemurians are very crystalline connected. They, they use crystalline energy. And um, if you work with anyone who does crystalline energy, healing and the like it's really amazing very grid Mm -hmm. um very powerful really amazing uh joseph adams joey adams Mm -hmm. he's like one of the best crystalline healers i've ever worked with very very powerful stuff cool okay so what are the 
OG's goal? What's their goal? What they're trying to achieve now? You know, at this point, they're like, one. they're in such a funk. And keep in mind, like, those who pursue, mm -hmm. like, evil or darkness or hatred for their power source, they want as much of that as they can get. But as we know, love is, it's always a greater source of power than corruption. It is. Um, so at the moment, they're doing everything in their power to keep our planet down, to keep our planet depressed and giving them all the dark energy they, they can handle. Right. So I grew up Christian. This sounds like devil stuff. Like, Very similar. Are they allies? They're totally different. Or they don't know the two exist. Like, is the devil trying to outbad the rep, the uh, uh, OGs? Like, ah, ha, ha, I outdeviled you this month. <laughs> Poor Lucifer, he gets such a bad rap. <laughs> He's still in my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, here's the thing. We talk about how everyone was born from love. Like, okay. if everyone comes from God or source, this is pure love, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone in every dimension, in every frequency, in every reality began from love. If you go to even the most mean, horrible demon, in the core of them, it may be like really compressed and hidden. There's still a spark of love. So there are like Archangel Michael and his army of angels. They go around and they go up to the demons and they touch them. And the demons remember who they were before they made free will choices that took them down a dark path. Okay. So, yeah, the reptilians and the demons, you know that they're like buddies. You know that devils, demons, reptilians, these guys are all like, you know, in cahoots with each other because they're, you know, bad hombres, right? <laughs> kind of sounds like old school Justice League and the other bad people. I know. I can't remember what they were called. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, of course they're going to be teaming up together. But if um, I was trained, I was trained by shamans to heal what we call reptilians and return them to where they came from. So you're not trying to fight them. You're trying to kill them. That's a totally no, but, different outlook on it. But they're trying to fight me. So it's definitely like a little bit of a, yeah, you know, like imagine um, someone with a lot of weapons is coming up to you and you get to do a little Tai Chi and smile. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> Bob and weave. Bob yeah. Weave. Yeah. Like it, because if I fight them, that gives them more power. And why? You got to tell them why. Why? Because they feed off anger and hate. Okay. And fighting, unless you can be completely emotionally neutral when you fight, then it's more like sparring than fighting. See, I like this because it also it relates to the people we see every day, right? If you have somebody who's negative and they want to argue and, and fight with you, and if you feed into that, say it takes two to tango, right? Two to argue. Eventually, they don't have anyone to argue with. They just go away. That's true, too. Exactly. Exactly. So it's a lot of cord cutting. And um, so I can tell you, I was... Um, in a place, I was brought into a place that they were under attack, someone's residence, under attack by reptilians. And um, I went in there, and while I was there, I called, I, I did um, with my laptop, walked around the house with several angelic healers, shaman healers, and the like, as we did a walkthrough together. And they were able to who confirmed everything that I had seen. It's, it's, it's always good for me to get a little evidential stuff. So I walked through, took my notes, mm -hmm. and then I brought through a variety of, of people that I turned to for my 
support. And as we walked through, they all saw all the same things that I had already noted. And then afterwards we had a talk and they gave me advice on how to help these people. This was not a paid thing. So uh, we were all volunteering because it was um, a family that was really in a state of terror. Um, and so we set energetic grids or I set energetic grids through the house and protections. Mm -hmm. I also created a portal that went directly to the white queen so that anytime I found any of these beings, I could just shoot them right through the portal to their queen who would embrace them and return them to self. I was trained with this technique. Now it was exhausting and for me a little terrifying at times. And um, at the end, all of it went was for no good beyond my education because this couple was who owned the property had become so um, addicted to battling these dark forces that they did not want to evolve their skills. I had given them training on how to evolve their skills and they used my training to go and attack the others and they undid all the grid. So I had to just dismantle my, my connection and walk away because um, I saw this couple's energy, once they developed better skills, their energy became darker. And all they really wanted was the feeling of power when you're in the middle of a big fight against a worthy foe. So, you know, this going after, you know, original guardians, reptilians, whatever, you have to be careful. You have to make sure you are always in alignment with your light or you can fall into the fray. And like, That's, like darkness can't, can't use darkness to fight darkness. You can only use light, right? Right. And I think that's a lot of why we have so many of these reptilians in our politics because people go to, I'm going to be a good person and take them on, but then they think they have to play the political game or... You know, they end up getting pulled into it. And the next thing you know. Nice guys finish last. That's like the saying, which goes. So, yeah, I can see how people can fall into that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Um, you know, I don't recommend that people go out and look for reptilians any more than I recommend people go out looking for demons. But certainly when you see them. <laughs> you put it you that way. You, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> what are you doing, Sarah? I'm demon hunting. What? Okay. You, you have a good time with that. <laughs> oh, trust me. I have done that. And <laughs> not for, I mean, not a, like assisting others who know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not okay. for the layman. Not okay. for the layman. Yeah. No, it's not something I would ever even do of my own volition without right. A ton of support and um, but the best defense we have if you feel like um, any of these dark angry entities are around you is what I call a, a atomic love bomb which is um, a lot of people will put up like a robe of light a robe of mirrors a shield of light or whatever so they're protecting themselves and they're hiding behind a barrier of protection. You can do that. The problem with it is you have to like maintain your awareness, keep it going, and that can be a little exhausting. Um, and if you ever think that it's weakening, it's going to weaken, you know, because you have to maintain it. What I recommend is practice opening yourself up to your soul, an angel, whoever it is that to you is the highest energy coming to you of divine love, pure love. So that you are, and ground yourself so that any extra is flowing into earth. So you are like a pillar of love flowing into you and through you. And, you know, you can put up safety if you want of like only those of the highest level of love and frequency who care about 
my happiest and healthiest well-being who are here to flow only the purest love through me. And you can feel it. You can feel when love is flowing through you. You know, it's a unique feeling. Open yourself to love and then tell the love to just like fill you and fill you and fill you until you're just like ready to burst. And then you say, anyone who's around me, you have three choices. You can become a being of love, you can go away, or you can cease to exist. And then, boom, release the love. And if you work with the angels, invite the angels to come and help with it. Like they'll help your, hold your perimeters, you get more and more love boom, goes out like an atomic bomb. Love, 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 love. Whenever love hits these beings, they either become love or they run away. No, no love touching me. They go far away elsewhere or they literally cease to exist. Hmm. That's far better than going and fighting them. That, that sounds logical. I, I, I like it. Um, <laughs> it just made me think if that applies to um, partners and spouses too. Look, you got three choices. Either <laughs> <laughs> now we have a couple of questions. Um, oh, uh, Divya loves to listen to you, Will. And hey, she's in India. Oh, hi, Divya. And let's see. Crystal says, "I think this is what I meant to what I meant to learn here." My shaman guy just showed up and said, "Yes." So uh, thank you. Okay, someone asked if Trump is a uh, reptilian. I don't do politics. No, 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 no. But here's the thing: no, he's not. He's not. But the uh, librarian said we're the ones who created him, because if we lived in a space of love and caring and compassion, he could have been born as he is and would never have gained any power because he doesn't connect with love and compassion. So um, if we do not want him to have power, we need to bring the frequency of love and compassion to be the guiding energy of our country. And when that happens, then he'll basically, like the Wicked Witch of the West, sort of disappear. Will, you go into villages and you get uh -huh. people to help those of the greatest need. Right. Yeah. That so, is how you heal through. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah. So um, at different parts of the world where I go in there, um, we have uh, physical needs and then you also have spiritual needs. Like I know of people who um, feel they have been possessed by spirits and they need help. And then you have people that we all are aware of who are physically in the condition where they lack money, they lack resources. Um, and in both cases, uh, you just shower people with love. You wanna make sure they're in an environment where they're going to get attention. And that's what love really is, right? Love is attention. I think the opposite of love isn't hate. I think the opposite of love is apathy. Like, I don't care, I'm ignoring you. I'm just walking by you. I'm ignoring that you're on the street corner asking for money. I'm ignoring the fact that you're starving um, to death. And I think that if you see that someone has either a mental or spiritual um, um, almost imprisonment that's going on, if you're ignoring them and just saying, oh, they're crazy, <laughs> then I, I think that's worse than hatred. I think that apathy and looking the other way feeds to what you were saying about anybody who looks at the current state of who's in charge. Um, my wife said something years ago because she was a history major. And she said, if you look back in time and you look back at the laws that were in place back in the day, that's telling you what people were doing. It's not telling you what they weren't doing. It's the mm -hmm. fact that people were doing it, that they had laws. So when you look at um, anybody who's in control. Um, if it's something that you perceive to be dark forces, then they are mirroring the environment. And the only way to change it is with love. Absolutely. That makes so much sense. Yeah. So when it comes to anyone who ever has to deal 
with the OGs, and I'm not talking original gangsters. I'm talking about the original guardians. Those people that <laughs> formerly were called reptilians, but we're not going to bring it like that no more because we just know that that ticks them off. If someone right. runs into them, it sounds like the best thing to do is to send out love and not try to fight because they just get bigger or more empowered. Is that what you suggest for those people who run into original guardians? I would say always remember who you are. Okay. We, and think of, be aware of what energy you're absorbing. Mm -hmm. So if an OG comes up to you and they're like, I'm going to get you. If you respond to that, then you're automatically going to absorb their energy. If you're like, oh, that's interesting. One moment. Divine, come into me. Self, I'm empowered. And okay, um, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have things that are happening on our planet that are quite frightening. You know, we have... Um, riots and illness and poverty are like rising up to the forefront and coronavirus there you uh -huh. go how we respond to that is similar to how we respond to reptilians because you know they're in the fray of the ones who are like you know hmm. making everything worse they're the ones whispering in everyone's ears or you know, manipulating, like, it, it's just what they do. So how we respond to that is by being one with compassion, one with healing, one with caring. We can stand up to the oppressors, but we do not need to be intimidated by them. Now, when Trump's Nazi stormtroopers are going up to peaceful protesters and tear gassing them and beating them and arresting them. Yes, that's something to be afraid of. But how did the people of Portland respond? The wall of moms standing between them and the protesters, the wall of dads who came in face masks and um, what is it, the, the leaf blowers and they were blowing the tear gas back to the troops. That is so much more powerful of a response. It's such a powerful step of courage for these two human walls to stand between the peaceful protesters and, you know, the, as far as I can tell, how is this even legal stormtroopers for, you know, Trump trying to emulate his hero, you know, Hitler. So that's what I'm talking about, that having love and compassion does not mean you need to have love and compassion for that individual. It means, how would a person of love and compassion respond? Kind of like, what would Jesus do? There you go. I like that bumper sticker. Yes. What would Jesus do? You know what I learned recently? Um, the phrase, turn the other cheek, mm -hmm. is actually a very powerful phrase. It does not mean, if you hit me, I invite you to hit me again because i'm like you know a pansy or something in the old days people used their left hand for you know toilet and muck and whatever so well this is so you know common in many cultures where you don't have toilet paper and flush toilets okay so the left hand is the hand you do not eat with and it's the hand you do not touch people with to touch people with your left hand can be considered rude, very, very rude. So you touch people with your right hand. So if you are going to slap someone, if they are a child or a beloved slave, like if someone is a very bad slave, like you have lost all respect, you will slap your slave with your left hand. You can't get more disrespectful than that. If they are a beloved slave or a child and you want them to know their place, you backhand them with your right hand. The only time you slap someone on the face with your hand palm is if they're your equal. So when Jesus said to people, if someone hits you, 
turn the other cheek. What he's saying is if someone is treating you as less than an equal, look them in the eyes and say, do that again, but do it as an equal. So here's the thing. If you're, if it's a child or a slave and you hit them with the back, they're not allowed to respond. They have to cow down and take it. But if you hit someone as an equal, they get to respond. They get to fight back. There's so many jokes I had off of that. It's just too many for me to choose. I know. My brain's going to explode. But tell me this. The cheek, is the cheek like one side of your hand? Or did it? Yeah. You mean yeah. turn your cheek to look at them to cuss them out? Is that what? So, you know okay. Saying? Suppose my hand is someone else's hand. Okay. And I'm a slave or a child. They'll do this. Hit the cheek. You mean the cheek, cheek like face. Yeah. Right. Oh, you were very naughty. Don't do that again. I'm like, oh, okay. But if I'm their equal, and I'm like, really? Really? You want to take it out back? Okay, I got you. So if someone does this, he's saying, tell them to, if, then, you know what, do it this one, and then we'll talk. Interesting. Okay. And they say, what was special about Jesus? Not that he was the son of God, but he looked God in the face, eye to eye as equals. Hmm. This is what enlightened ones do. All enlightened ones become one with God. What does it mean to be one with God? You look them eye to eye, face to face. So when Jesus is looking you in the eye and saying, empower yourself to be equal to everyone and all what he's saying is we are all each and every one of us one in one with god and i'm challenging you to own that belief to own that rightful place that you have so that no one can really challenge you because you are aspect of god you are god wow that's hardcore mm -hmm. that is hardcore from the philosophy Right. I grew up with, which is I can do nothing uh, without <laughs> God. All things come from God. Now you want me to look God in the eye? Oh man! That's but hard it's hard. like it's like looking at your reflection. Ooh, because oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, because if we come from God, then we are God. So when you're looking God in the eye, you're looking yourself in the eye. When you look yourself in the eye, you're looking God in the eye. And when you and I look at each other in the eye, we are recognizing that we are both God and we are both equals. We are all one with God. So now for atheists and agnostics, I apologize, just like conform that to your belief system because the message is the same. Hmm. And for those who don't know, I'm a Unitarian Jew with full memory of my entire existence. So trust me, Lessons like this are always entertaining when they rattle in my brain. So when a reptilian comes up to you and says, bow down to me, I'm going to destroy you. Hmm. What would Jesus do? Turn the other cheek? Really? I am God. I challenge you to recognize the God in you. Okay. I like it. So as we come to the end of our Super cool chat. You taught me so much stuff. It's time just went by just like that. It Are there did. any final words or suggestions you would give to people? Um, let's see if we have any final questions. Sending light is very effective. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Kit Cloud Kit Kicker get, getting kicked out. That's a. <laughs> I would say that ten times. I know, or right? Time. Exactly. Maybe <laughs> um, change the name. Maybe the luck of change too. <laughs> oh, Kit Cloud Kicker is one of my favorite all-time names Kicker. ever. That is um, cool. What you do today? Yeah. I went around kicking clouds. You got to be pretty high up to kick a cloud. How like, awesome would that be? <laughs> I know, right? I did it actually in Sikkim, India. Mm -hmm. You're above the cloud. So, yeah, I would say. Um, for everyone, really get to know yourself mm -hmm. and realize you don't need to be intimidated by anyone. However, 
if someone is intimidating you, this is a karmic lesson for you to look at and say, what do I have to learn from this so I can be done with it, so I can be evolved from it? I like that. I think that's yeah. wonderful, wonderful words. Then, you know, I want to thank you for um, going over this topic. I try mm. to uh, be open-minded because we haven't seen everything. And I think that when you think you're seeing everything and you know everything, then you learn nothing new. So thank you on behalf of everyone for sharing your knowledge, wisdom, experience, and even your stories. Well, um, I want to thank you, Will. Thank you for calling me and saying, Benita, what's up with reptilians? Like, the OGs. What's up with the OGs? <laughs> the OGs. <laughs> they go around with big gold chains. And I don't know what. Now I'm just becoming offensive. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of my favorite TV shows, okay. The Last OG. I love that show. It's, it's like one funny. of my all-time favorite TV shows. Now I'm going to be like seeing it with a whole new perspective. I know, right? I messed it up for you. My bad. I do that. No, 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 no. You pulled me out from, <laughs> you saved me from myself before I like went off some terrible deep end. <laughs> <laughs> pulled my foot out of my mouth. Okay. So thank you guys. And remember, uh, the librarians feel brokenhearted about the you know, the OGs and would love to send them back to their queen, you know, and you know, with matriarch society, they came from something good. Let's get them back. All okay, getting a little god in this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>